the practices of Fitra. Allah predisposed mankind to perform particular acts of cleanliness or a good natural disposition which the scholars view as being necessary in order to maintain the good appearance which Allah created mankind upon. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, summarized these acts for us. When she reported that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Ten things are part of fitra, a good natural disposition. They are trimming the moustache, letting the beard grow, using the siwak, rinsing the nose clean with water, clipping the finger and toenails, washing the knuckles, plucking the armpit hair, removing the pubic hair, cleaning the private parts with water after using the toilet, and rinsing out the mouth with water. The first of these acts is the siwak, which is a stick or something similar from the arak tree, which is used to brush the teeth and rid them of food particles and odor. It strengthens the teeth and gums, makes the voice clearer and revitalizes the body. It also has other benefits. The practice of the Prophet, peace be upon him, was to use the siwak at any time. This is due to his saying, the siwak is purification for the mouth and pleasing to the Lord, Allah the Most High. Its use is especially recommended at the following times. During ablution, as the Prophet peace be upon him said, were it not that I might overburden my followers, I would have ordered them to use the siwak every time they make wudu. Similarly, it is recommended to use it before as salah the prayer, due to the Prophet saying, Were it not that I might overburden my followers, I would have ordered them to use the siwak at the time of every salah. And it is also recommended when one enters one's house, as Miqdar narrated from his father, may Allah be pleased with him, that he said, I asked Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, what does the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him, do first when he enters his house. She replied, he uses the siwak. It is recommended to use the siwak upon waking up from sleep. It has been reported that Hudayfa, may Allah be pleased with him, said, when the Prophet wakes up in the night, he cleans his mouth with the siwak. just as it is recommended before reading the Qur'an. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated when he ordered people to use the siwak that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Indeed, when a servant of Allah uses the siwak, then stands for prayer, an angel stands behind him to listen to his recitation. He, the angel, moves closer to him until he places his, the angel's, mouth on his, the reciter's, mouth. And there is nothing that comes out of his mouth of what he recites except that it is in the stomach of the angel. So clean your mouth before reading the Qur'an. Rinsing the mouth out with water is also one of the acts of fitra, a good natural disposition, and this entails putting water into the mouth and swishing it around. Rinsing the nose out with water entails gently inhaling water into the nose and then blowing it out. The third act of al-fitra is istinja, which is the removal of traces of urine and or feces by washing the private parts with water after relieving oneself. The fourth act of al-fitra is trimming the moustache, which entails grooming it properly and looking different from the disbelievers. Letting the beard grow is also an act of al-fitra. This means leaving the beard as it is and not removing any of it or shaving it as shaving it is forbidden 
as the Prophet, peace be upon him, ordered the people to grow it. Concerning this, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Trim the moustaches, leave the beards, and be different from the Magians. As for the sixth act of Al-Fitra, it is the removal of the pubic hair, which means shaving or cutting the pubic hair surrounding the private parts. One of the acts which are also Al-Fitra is obligatory male circumcision. It is the removal of the foreskin from the head of the penis. What is similar to this is female trimming which is the reduction of the extra skin above the slitoris. It is a recommended act which limits any excessive desire of the woman. This is according to the hadith where the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, ordered Umm Atiyah, be light in your cutting and do not remove any flesh. That is, just trim the foreskin that's over the slitoris. For it gives some smiles to her face and brightens it and is more pleasing for her husband. The eighth act of Al-Fitra is clipping the finger and toenails and next plucking or shaving the hair under the arm. By so doing neatness is achieved and bad odors associated with hair growing there is avoided. It is disliked to leave one's nails and also the armpit hair, pubic hair and moustache unattended for more than 40 days. As it is reported from Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, that he said, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, prescribed a time limit for the trimming of the moustache, clipping the nails, shaving the pubic hair and the armpit, that they should not be left unattended for more than 40 days. The tenth act of Al-Fitra, a good disposition, is washing the knuckles, which are the joints of the fingers as seen from the back of the hand, and also washing off the dirt that collects around the ears, and neck and some other parts of the body. 